Hello students, in this video we discuss some short questions on functional analysis. Functional analysis is a study of function spaces. In linear algebra, we deal with generally finite dimensional spaces, norm spaces and inner product spaces. But here in functional analysis, we mainly study infinite dimensional spaces and metric structure of norm spaces and inner product spaces. So, we can say that it is the extension of linear algebra to infinite dimensional spaces. In the first course of functional analysis, we generally study some properties of Banach spaces. Banach space is a complete norm space. Some properties of Hilbert spaces. Hilbert space is a complete inner product space and some special types of operators on Hilbert spaces. First question. Give an example of an isometry on a Hilbert space which is not surjective. Justify your answer. The unilateral shift is defined on the space small l2. Small l2 is a sequence space uh, where the elements are sequences which are square summable. So the unilateral shift is defined as s of x1, x2 and so on is <coughs> equal to 0, x1, x2 and so on. This is also called as the right shift. Now, if you compute the norm, it is easy to see that norm Sx equal to norm x. So, it is isometry and it is not on 2 because if you consider E1 that is 1, 0, 0, then that element is not in the range of S. So, range of S is not the whole L2. That means it is not on 2. Next question, for an operator A on a Hilbert space H, if A equal to A star, that means A is self-adjoint or Hermitian and inner product AH, H is 0 for all H, then we want to prove that A equal to 0. For an operator A on a Hilbert space H, if A is equal to A star, then norm A is given by supremum of mod inner product AH with H such that norm h equal to 1. Now by the given condition, inner product a h, h is 0 for all h. That means norm a equal to 0. Therefore, the operator a is 0. Next question. If the Hilbert space h is L to n, again it is a sequence space and capital L is given by L of the sequence alpha n is alpha capital N for a fixed integer capital N. Then we want to find the norm of a fixed vector h0 where lh equal to inner product h with h0 for all h. Since the linear transformation l from small l2 to l2 given by l of alpha n is alpha capital N is a bounded linear functional. By Ries representation theorem, it is of the form inner product of h with h0 for all h. h0 is some fixed vector and by observation we can easily find that the vector h0 contains all zeros except the nth place. The nth place contains 1. Hence, the norm of h0 equal to 1. Next question. Give an example of a non-identity unitary operator on an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. The first example is a bilateral shift. It is defined on L2z. So, the sequence is infinite on both sides and it is same as the right shift operator. Then if you compute S star that is adjoint that is the backward shift or left shift and easily you can compute S S star and S star S and both are identity. So this is a unitary operator. The second example is operator on L2 R. It is a function space, square integrable functions. V is defined as V of F at T is F of T minus 1. Now the adjoint V star is given by V star F at T is F of T plus 1. And easily we can compute V V star and V star V and that is equal to identity. So these two examples are non-identity unitary operators on infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces. Give an example of an operator A on a Hilbert space and a subspace M that is invariant for A but not reducing for A. 
now m is reducing for a means <coughs> m is invariant for a and also m is invariant for its adjoint a star the example is the unilateral shift s which is already discussed now the space m is a closed linear span of the orthonormal basis e2 e3 and so on so you uh, don't allow the first element e1 take e2 e3 and all the orthonormal uh, basis uh, elements and take its closed linear span now this subspace m is invariant for s because if you operate s on a e2 we get e3 if you operate s on e3 we get e4 and so on but it is not invariant for s star s star is a backward shift and if you operate s star on e2 then we get e1 which is not in m so m is not invariant for s star that means m is not reducing for s next example this is a multiplication operator phi is a function from l infinity l infinity is a space of all essentially bounded functions that is a function which is bounded almost everywhere in the domain then the multiplication operator m phi is defined on l2 m phi of f equal to phi f then we want to find adjoint and conditions on phi so that the multiplication operator m phi is hermitian and unitary by easy computations we can see that the adjoint m phi star of f is phi bar f so the adjoint m phi star is again a multiplication operator multiplication by phi bar now the operator m phi is hermitian if and only if m phi star equal to m phi hermitian means self adjoint now m phi star equal to m phi this is possible if and only if phi bar equal to phi that means phi is real valued the operator m phi is unitary if and only if m phi star m phi equal to m phi m phi star equal to identity that means mod phi equal to 1 true or false justify your answer if h is a hilbert space over r and inner product a h h is 0 for all h then a star equal to a if the operator is self adjoint then we know that the value of the inner product a h h is real for all h now this is the converse part solution the statement is false if you consider the matrix a 0 1 minus 1 0 then you can easily check that the inner product a h h equal to 0 for all h in h but a star is not equal to a for matrix a star means conjugate transpose next question prove that the inverse of an invertible bounded linear map a from a banach space x to banach space y is bounded solution this is the application of an open mapping theorem what is open mapping theorem if x and y are banach spaces and capital f from x to y is a bounded linear surjective map then f is open f is open means f maps open sets to open sets now in the given condition capital a is a bounded bijective map from x to y x and y are banach spaces so we can apply open mapping theorem and by open mapping theorem a is open a is open means it maps open sets to open sets that means a inverse is continuous and for operator operator is continuous if and only if it is bounded so in this case inverse is also a bounded operator give an example of an orthonormal basis of l2 0 to 2 pi for each integer n we define ent as 1 upon square root of 2 pi e raised to int orthonormal means we have to check that it is orthogonal and also norm is 1 then you uh, by easy computations you can see that the inner product en em is 1 upon 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi en em bar and we know that for a complex exponential function it is a periodic function with period 2 pi i so this integral is zero if n is not equal to m and for n equal to m we get inner product en en is 
वन अपॉन टू पाय इंटीग्रल जीरो टू टू पाय इक्वल टू वन सो दिस इज द ऑर्थोनॉर्मल सेट फॉर एल टू जीरो टू टू पाय फॉर बेसिस यू हैव टू चेक वन मोर कंडीशन दैट इफ यू कंसिडर एनी फंक्शन एफ इन एल टू एंड इट्स इनर प्रोडक्ट विथ ई एन इज जीरो फॉर ऑल एन देन द फंक्शन एफ इट सेल्फ इज जीरो इफ पी एंड क्यू आर प्रोजेक्शन्स देन प्रू दैट पी क्यू इज अ प्रोजेक्शन इफ एंड ओनली इफ पी क्यू इक्वल टू क्यू पी नाउ प्रोजेक्शन इज अ ऑपरेटर विच इज आइडेम्पोर्टेंट एंड हर्मिशियन आइडेम्पोर्टेंट मीन्स इट्स स्क्वेर इज द सेम एंड हर्मिशियन मीन्स इट्स एट जॉइंट इज द सेम पी एंड क्यू आर प्रोजेक्शन्स सो पी स्क्वेर इज पी एंड पी स्टार इज पी ऑल्सो क्यू स्क्वेर इज क्यू एंड क्यू स्टार इज क्यू इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट सपोज पी क्यू इज अ प्रोजेक्शन सो इट इज आइडेम्पोर्टेंट एंड हर्मिशियन Now we want to prove that PQ equal to QP. Now we know that PQ star equal to PQ, but PQ star equal to Q star P star, which is equal to QP. Hence we get PQ equal to QP. In the second part, suppose PQ equal to QP. Now we want to prove that PQ is a projection. That means PQ is self adjoint and PQ is idempotent. Now PQ star is PQ. And PQ square is PQ PQ, that is same as P square Q square, which is same as PQ. Therefore, PQ is idempotent and self-adjoint. Therefore, it is projection. Let X be a space C one zero one and Y C zero one, both with sub norm. Let f from X to Y be defined as f of g equal to g dash. Show that f is not continuous. C one zero one means the space of all functions whose derivative is also continuous, and C zero one is the space of functions uh, which are continuous on zero one. Solution: Consider the sequence x n t equal to t raised to n. Then the derivative x n dash t is n t raised to n minus one. Note that the sequence x n is convergent, but f of x n is unbounded. f of x n is n t raised to n minus one. So, if you consider the norm, norm f of x n is nor is n, which is unbounded. So, the sequence f of x n is not convergent. That means f is not continuous. If t is self adjoint, that is t equal to t star, and lambda is eigen value of t, then show that lambda is real. Suppose t h equal to lambda h. This means h is a eigen vector of t corresponding to the eigen value lambda. That means h is non-zero. Then lambda times inner product h h is inner product lambda h h, which is inner product t h h. Now we can shift t from first place to second place, and there we get actually t star, but t star equal to t, that is equal to inner product h comma t h, which is inner product h comma lambda h. and we can take lambda common from the second place so we get lambda bar inner product hh so we get lambda minus lambda bar times inner product hh equal to 0 but h is non zero so inner product h comma h is non zero that means we have lambda bar equal to lambda therefore the eigen value lambda is real thank you very much for watching this video and best wishes for your study This video is also useful for preparing for MCQ in functional analysis. Thank you.